Commanders. In this video I'll be sharing with you a game that I played in a limited time tank, the Mark I, which is based off of the first tanks used in World War I for trench warfare a hundred years ago. If you want some historical information on the Mark I, you can go on the World of Tanks console website and see a cool video that they have that takes you inside the tank. The trench warfare game mode, which features the Mark I, is a similar event to the Lunar, Spectre, the Christmas toy tank, and the HMS Tog. It's a fun change up to the regular World of Tanks games that we always play, so go and give it a try. To get the Mark I tank, all you have to do is log into your account. After that, select the crew that you want to use on it, which can be from any country, and if you want to, you can add consumables, such as repair kits, first aid kit, and a fire extinguisher, which is what I did. Playing the Mark I helps you get the op for the current hero tank, the Centennial T95. First, you have to play a game in the Mark I, placing it as one of the top three damage dealers on your team. Next, go to your ops and activate the 100 Years of Honor op. This is a boost op, which you can have in addition to three of your regular ops. And finally, you have to play a multiplayer game where you place in the top three damage dealers on your team. You then get a random reward towards the Centennial op of either one additional point, three, five, eight, ten, or twenty. With some luck, it can make it quite easy to get the Centennial. Now let's have a more in-depth look at the Mark I using the World of Tanks new analyzing feature which they just added in this update. This allows us to check armor values across the tank and the location of the different modules. The accuracy for the Mark I isn't that great, so your best choice is to try to shoot for the main viewport at the front of the tank. And it's good to note that you can't actually track the Mark I, so save your shells for actual damage hits. You can also penetrate it in its side sponsons. The Mark I has 40 shells to divide up between its regular ammunition and the flamethrower fuel. The flamethrower fuel can be resupplied at uh, bunkers that are laid out across the trench warfare battlefield, but the shells cannot be. Now let's start a match with the Mark I and see what it can do. The 100th anniversary map is only played on Team Destruction. The center of the map is made up of a series of trench lines, which the Mark I historically fought in. On the top side of the map, you have a road and a series of hills. And on the bottom, we have a stream with a few more hills and rocky formations there. I really like fighting in the waterway at the start of the match. It's a natural choke point and so it brings the Mark I's close together, which gives you plenty of opportunities to use your flamethrower, which is the most unique feature on this tank. You can see the green special pickup icon on the map. This is where you can run over bunkers to pick up the gasoline that you need for your flamethrower. Each pickup area can only be used once for a resupply, so remember to share it with your teammates. One thing to note about the Mark I's game style that it's not very good at ridgeline fighting, which there are a lot of ridgelines in this map, so it's kind of inconvenient, but your guns are quite low in comparison to the top height of your tank, and so people can see you from sniping perches without actually even going up over the ridge. I recommend trying to stay on flat ground and really only charging over the trenches when you're making an assault move, which is usually best with platoon mates. Usually when you go in to use the flamethrower with the Mark I, the enemy also brings out their flamethrower and you usually end up lighting each other on fire. In this case, having a manual fire extinguisher is very useful because you want to wait until after the enemy expends all its flamethrower fuel because otherwise you'll use the fire extinguisher and then they'll reset you on fire quite easily. The engine is also commonly damaged when you're flamethrowering head to head so the repair kit is a good idea because climbing over ridge lines like the Mark I is supposed to be able to will become quite difficult. Here we're going to get a look at the Mark I's flamethrower in action. The range of the flamethrower is extremely short, so make sure you hold your fire until you're right up and close to the enemy. And make sure to have a bag of marshmallows to roast while you watch the enemy burn. 
you can clearly see the difference having a manual fire extinguisher makes. Now we get to have a look at the capabilities of the Mark I's gun. Although both Sponson shoot, it forms a single shell when it flies. It's got a two second rate of fire which keeps the game fast moving and exciting. The Mark I has good traverse speed, especially considering how large it is and that it's supposed to be a World War I tank. On this map, you'll often only get glimpses of the other Mark I's peeking above various hills and trench lines. With 30 shells, it's not a bad idea to take some speculative shots like I am here, but watch going too overboard with it, because you will burn through all your ammunition in a minute. Although at this range it's hard to hit the viewport and the spawns and weak spots, I still managed to get a few damage hits. This is pretty good considering I'm shooting at almost 300 meters, but you'll see how quickly I burn through the bulk of my ammo. This is a decently small map, and since the Mark I is pretty fast, you're able to reposition without really killing the momentum of the game. I was hoping to get into another flamethrower duel with this last remaining enemy Mark I, so I went to resupply. In order to do that, you actually have to crush the bunker. Now, I never got the opportunity to get close enough, but I'm able to pick up a few more damage hits, and then I let my teammates finish him off. It's important to note that the Mark I does not actually earn any silver, so any consumables that you do use in the battle will be charged to your account. This was a pretty good game for the Mark I. I managed to win the battle and destroy an enemy unit, so that means that I get one point towards the Centennial Op. And since I was one of the top three damage dealers on the team, I get the 100 Years of Honor Boost Op, which I can use in one of my multiplayer games. I'm having a blast playing the Mark I, and I hope you will too. Make sure to platoon up with some of your friends to add to the fun. And good luck in getting the Centennial Hero Tank. That's all for now, and I hope you enjoyed this video.